In this video, I'm going through every tool in the basic section of Lightroom, and I'm using the desktop version because it fits better on YouTube, but if you're using Lightroom Mobile on your phone, all the tools have the same names, they all do the same things, and they're all available on the free version of Lightroom. So let's get started. So we'll start with treatment, and that's very simple. It's either color or black and white, and you can see that when you change it to black and white, it also changes the profile to Adobe Monochrome. Now these are all small changes that Lightroom can make based on their data and what they think should be correct. I generally don't use these unless I'm switching to black and white and then I just keep the Adobe Monochrome, but for now we'll just keep it at Adobe Color. The white balance and the easiest way I can explain is the overall color of your photo, and it uses two values to determine that, the temperature and the tint. Most cameras have these options built in for when you're taking the photo. So say it's a cloudy day, you could set it to cloudy and it'll change the colors to match that. And if you're not sure what the white balance was, you can always click auto and see if that works. I don't really like that for this. I'm gonna keep it as shot for now. But if I wanted a bit more control over the white balance, this is where the temperature and the tint come in. The temperature literally correlates to the temperature. This value is measured in Kelvin. So if I wanted it to be cooler, I could bring it over to the the blue side if I wanted it to be warmer I could bring it over to the yellow side because there's snow in this photo if I wanted it to look like a bright white of snow I could bring it over somewhere like here and I could keep it like that I very rarely adjust the tint of the photo just because the greens and the magentas don't really need adjusting unless something went really wrong with your white balance when taking the photo exposure is probably the easiest one to explain it's just the brightness so I can darken it or I can brighten it. If you look up here in the histogram, you can see that it moves to the right when I increase and to the left when I decrease. Generally, you don't want anything on this side or that side too much. Around the middle is fine, but look at your photo and see what looks the best for you. Contrast is the difference between the brighter parts of your image and the lighter parts of your image. So this slider is kind of a smart version of that where it measures what it thinks are highlights and shadows and adjusts them. If I move it to the left, it reduces contrast, which means it brings down the highlights and brings up the shadows. And if I increase contrast, it brings down the shadows and brings up the highlights. If you think this contrast slider is not as accurate as you would like, or you just want more control over these changes, that's where the highlight shadows, whites and blacks come into play. So say I like where the shadows are at, but I think the highlights should be brighter, I can bring them up without adjusting the shadows. I can do the same by bringing it down. If I think the highlights are fine, but these areas with the shadows are too dark, I can bring them up. If I think some of these images are way too bright and they're just so white that it's distracting, I can bring them down and take the edge off. Or if I think that I want more of a punch from the white, I can bring them up and that sometimes looks really good in the snow. The blacks are the darkest parts of the image and these can be really useful for adding a lot of contrast but you can also bring them up just like you would with the shadows. Texture, clarity and dehaze in my understanding all kind of deal with detail and sharpening and texture. So if I zoom in on the buildings here the way the clarity slider works is it kind of increases contrast and sharpens areas that already have some detail. So if you look at the buildings by adding clarity you can see that it adds a bit of contrast and sharpens them digitally normally you don't want to add too much of this because it can really destroy your image and normally you don't want to bring the clarity all the way down either because it just looks fake in my opinion these are best used in selective editing sometimes I'll add a little bit of either one depending on the shot but clarity is a bit too strong of a change for me to use a lot of texture on the other hand I find is a bit smarter so instead of affecting everything that has a little bit of detail in it, it seems to go easier on the digital sharpening and the contrast, and it kind of just adds more detail. So you can see, even if I bring this up to 100%, it still looks quite good. It has a similar effect to the clarity if you reduce it all the way, so I wouldn't recommend that. But adding a bit of texture is not gonna do any harm to your photo. Dehaze is almost exactly what it sounds like. If you have haze in your photo, it will get rid of it. And if you need haze, you can add some, depending on which way you drag it. Most of the time, I use this to bring back details in the clouds and in the sky. So you can see how much more detail you see in the clouds, you get some texture. The only thing about this is it adds a lot of blue to the shot. And also you can see what it does to buildings. It kind of adds that same clarity look. So this is another one that I would use in selective editing but if you want to add just a little bit 
again that's not going to hurt. The last two here are vibrance and saturation, so these both apply to your colors. Saturation is obvious, it takes colors and just simply increases the saturation. Like everything, you don't want to add too much. And if you want, you can take away all of them to make it black and white. But if you're taking a raw photo, a lot of the time, just a little bit of saturation can help liven up the photo. Vibrance is kind of like what texture is to clarity, but for saturation. So it's like a smarter version of saturation. If you look at the difference here, if I bring saturation all the way up, it simply takes the saturation of every color and increases it. Vibrance, on the other hand, seems to choose which colors it thinks need a bit more saturation and which ones don't need as much and make those changes for you but most of the time you see a lot of the changes in blues and in the sky and I don't really have an explanation for that it's just something I've noticed so if you want to add a little bit of both of them again that's not gonna hurt your image at all so those are the basic tools in Lightroom and what they do I hope this gave you a good idea of the things you can do with these tools and why they're all there a lot of these tools are very similar to each other and basically do the same things it's just some tools give you a bit more control Control, and some things do a bit more for you and take a bit of the work out. The next video in this series of going through the Lightroom settings, I'll be using the tone curves, so look out for that video. Thanks for watching, I'm done.